All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for To, to Your, Your Eternity, Eternity Season 1, Episode 10. 10. All right. Uh-huh. It, the yeah. time has come. Goo goo, uh-huh. you must burn the child. <laughs> burn it with all the fires burn you it! can muster. <laughs> yep. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Um, this yeah. is this is a problem. This is though. just a bit of a problem. It was a great decoy to have the wounded child yeah. throw herself at the at the nanny, but uh, but now yeah. you've been attacked mm-hmm. a second time. Yep. Now and this is very much what's looking to be a loss because remember March was what beat the bear. That's true. Although so. we don't know if the other forms that Fushi has have been taken yet. So I would assume they're not. Yeah, I, I, let's hope not. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if that's the case, then okay, Goo Goo, you're probably fine. But, you know, being able to breathe fire might be helpful against this woodland being. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. But, uh, all right. Now we'll also have to see if this is the same entity. Right. Or if this is another, like, one of it. Yeah, you know? a sprout of it of some kind or yeah, something. Or, or what have you. So, yeah. uh, good luck. Good luck, Fushi. Right. And please. Keep Goo Goo alive. Mm-hmm. That'd Please. be pretty great. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, y'all, without further ado, let's get into this. All right, everyone, now be sure to go check out the reaction portion of the video in the description below, then come back here for the discussion. Oh, this was such a that sweet, was, that was great episode. That was, that was wonderful. Yeah. And now yeah. we know <laughs> that arcs can end without characters dying necessarily yeah because you know? while gugu and the story with him and mm-hmm. fushi could continue right this arc of their story has effectively ended yep now like, it's on to whatever the second chapter of their story is yeah and, and and it would be interesting it would be interesting to see if there's a possibility if he could still like get gugu's form uh-huh. but gugu doesn't have to die right yep yep yeah that, that could be that could be a really cool like kind of way if he has to split up from Gugu uh-huh. because either um, the knockers, as they're now called, right. um, attack again. And it's the thing of where uh, I don't want you all to have to mm-hmm. you know, be forced to protect yeah. me. Classic superhero kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, mm-hmm. and and there's some cool aspects of where he could see Gugu and them again, mm-hmm. you know, maybe way in the future. Or maybe even Gugu goes with him as they leave Booze Man and everybody behind, you know, yeah, because possibly. Gugu can breathe fire which is very yeah. helpful and then and then the uh you know the the form in the op might not actually be fushi that might be just gugu mm-hmm. like yep. that that, that yep. could be a really interesting aspect and yeah and that's kind of one of the interesting things about the op is that you know obviously there's some things that are very spoilery in it so they're getting masked for us right but i think one of the obvious things that would be needed to be masked is what are the forms that fushi could get yep but the mm-hmm. thing is is that just because we see someone that looks like Gugu, for instance, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's Fushi or Gugu. It could be mm-hmm. one or the other. So yep. just yep. something to think about. Um, right. But having this all be so happy, the stuff with Reen and her family also being handled mm-hmm. in a very mature way. And yeah, it's I not like, like that. that they're like, oh, you're such awful people. It's like, no, no, no. Let's let's listen to what our daughter is saying. Right. There's let's d- understand that there's some there's some nuanced aspects to this. Mm-hmm. She definitely needs to go home. Right. And they're not going to really budge on that regard. But we're not going to let her be incapable of visiting here. Right. And so the fact that four years later she's mm-hmm. coming over yeah. just of her own accord by Run, herself. Running away again. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 exactly. Uh-huh. But like running away again with like supplies for you know sewing and things like that yeah or maybe you know it's just a thing of like hey let her make excursions out of the house Mm -hmm. let her stay outside the house you know and not sleep necessarily in the same place every right and then and then maybe just have an understanding of hey you know we do need you to be back every you know few days few days or something right that way you don't have to send guards to go you know like drag her back right she's not a kid anymore also exactly time skipping this regard also solves that problem on a simple note right but okay Fushi learning things over the next over the last four years, basically. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't look like he necessarily learned how to get stronger, which is what the being like the being wanted him yep. to get because he lost. Yeah, he was lucky. Goo 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 won that fight. Yes, not Fushi. Yes, and, and I and love that goo goo won so emphatically, oh, so uh-huh. dramatically, yep, yep. so totally. Yep, and that the being was basically like. This is being brittle, but not weak. Right. 
Yeah, oh, that just, was that was oh, awesome. It was so good. <laughs> One of the other things that I also really appreciated is that mm -hmm. when the the fact that the being had to actually help Fushi transform after he'd been turned back into a rock even though he got the memories and everything back mm -hmm. while he's stuck in the form of the rock he has no will mm -hmm. right he's a stone right? right so so he would need serious stimulation mm -hmm. in, in order, order to, to actually... get that first transformation back and maybe that's why he hasn't turned back into a rock since then mm -hmm. right because once he does he's just a rock you know yeah th there's not there's not much that you can do there yeah there is an interesting aspect though of if he has the forms wouldn't he have also the things that he's gained from being in those forms so right. that he can actually like like Yeah, because the dog the, like dog the dog can, can still speak. speak. Exactly. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. things that transfer across forms. Now, right. the reason for that might be just because technically dogs do have the uh, you know, they have the they have the vocal cords essentially necessary to making noise from their mouths. Right. So then it's the that means they also they also have brains, which means they have the capacity to think. Right. Even if they might not be able to think very well. Very well. You know, a rock just a rock has does nothing. not have yeah. that at all. So that's that is a good mm -hmm. point. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the the whole oof. thing of Goo Goo going back to get the booze and then having Reen's family be there that was great. I loved uh -huh. the the fact that him getting you know bodily thrown did actually break the 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 break open the the container of the alcohol right. inside and him in some ways the reason why he vomited was because his body probably reacted to mm -hmm. stuff jostling around in there and yep. splashing out mm -hmm. or leaking out yep. and then he goes let vomits it out that actually saved him right because otherwise he would have gotten crazy alcohol poisoning or something yeah, yeah exactly because it know, would have gone not through right. his digestive system yeah, but through. a child well and a child suddenly has you know a half gallon of hard alcohol that just goes into their system all at once, right? Yeah, they, That's, they would die. That, yeah. So he gets insanely drunk instead, mm -hmm. like like ridiculously yep. drunk. Mm -hmm. Like his whole body is flush. Right. I love that very simple aspect of this being an animated medium so we can communicate things rather quickly and, and that it's not that he's kind of drunk. We know he's, he's yeah. plastered he, drunk. He just had three or four shots of, of hard alcohol, you know. And, yeah, yeah, and he's a kid. And he's a kid. Right. Yeah. So... Then we get the fun writing opportunity here, which is he gets to confess essentially to Reen. Yep. Probably does not know that he did that the next mm -hmm. day. Yep. And the idea that he went so totally in that, no, no, no. The only person who, uh, the person who loves Reen the most is me, Goo Goo. Like, right. like, I just love the extra confidence uh -huh. and the swagger of like, no, no, no y'all family ain't shit. Yeah. I'm her real family. I'm her right. new family. I saved. I, I I was really worried he was gonna say that. I like, thought I was. I saved her life back then. Uh huh. But and but I, I don't care if I have this face because of her. Like yep. you know, and then like, oh no! Shut up! <laughs> shut up! Shut up! Go, go. Right. No! 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 Turns out it was a different secret. And yeah. And I also mm -hmm. kind of like it going this way because that means that um, there's still more that they have to. Sure. You but, know, but eventually but, share. Together. Right. Right. Yeah. But there's also the idea that. It doesn't matter if he did. True. Right? It doesn't True. matter that he was the one who saved her. It doesn't matter that she's the reason why, you know, his face is like this. Mm -hmm. Right? No. Yeah. He's him. He's yeah. Goo Goo. And the oh, way he is Goo -Goo. right now, yeah. you know, he's going to go fight a wooden, well, not child, bear it ends up being. Yeah. And that part where, holy shit, he goes up to the bear and then suddenly it just lurches oh. forward like going through the forest <laughs> that part huh, freaked me huh. out because you don't see it coming necessarily either it's like okay it's right there it's got the it's got the things it can shoot it out feels you know the, like it swipes down with the the tendrils right and then it feels the fire and like oh recoils like oh no i don't and like then, that and then from that from a very passive kind of you know not taking Go you away. seriously yeah. then it goes into full charge and oh, <laughs> that uh yeah with the forest getting torn up in front of it and everything that that was just Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ugh. But we got a wholesome time skip. Yeah, we got a wholesome time skip. We have a plot of the knockers being a threat on the global scale. Right. Which is interesting in that the being is like, I will not rob them of their will. It is important uh -huh. that all beings, that was something that was said in the very beginning of the episode, that, you know, it's important that beings have that ability, ability to, to choose. choose. Yeah. Now, that's thematically appropriate for the episode because mm -hmm. of what Gugu chose here was basically to potentially risk his life oh, yeah. to save Fushi, which, awesome, wonderful, mm -hmm. but also the idea of, okay, these entities, because this definitely seems like a different one, 
uh-huh. now that we've had this happen. Right. It's, there are multiple there of are them. Multiple, yeah. And and they learn. Okay. Yeah. I really think that whatever they are, were, what have you, I really, I, I really feel like they could be basically failed fushis, mm-hmm. and that's so the too. thing of where eventually they go mad or they go right um, for the purpose of stealing rather than observing. You yeah. know, because that whole copy not steal thing is. <laughs> yeah, but but the uh-huh. the the obvious threat inherent in that ability is the idea that they would render the world inert. They sure. They would take everything. Right. Eventually, they'd probably cannibalize each other. Yeah. Assuming that they're not some kind of, like, hive mind of some kind, because given that there was only the one, but the <sighs> entity could. said that they would learn, that would mean that there's some kind of connection, like, between them, you know? Right. Because otherwise, yeah. they, you know, oh, one disappears. They wouldn't know what happened. There's there's another way to look at this, I think, in that this is some aspect of the Earth fighting back against the aberration sure. that is amidst it, kind yeah, of violating it, nature. It does feel particular that they're all wood. Yeah, right? that like, feels a little bit weird. Like, yeah. Like, eventually you'd find some that are, like, a cat, yeah. you know? Or that have, like, different powers or whatever, you know? Not all sure. fighting the same way. I just realized what the wood thing actually could be. The wood thing actually just is an example as to a rock equivalent that could be a reverse, like a reversion. Okay. Like a, oh. Oh, like, oh like, I like it. Like, like Fushi basically yeah, reverted yeah. to being a rock here. Oh, A and tree is the kind of thing that could have just been sitting there mm-hmm. for eons, like millions well, of years. And it's just mm-hmm. that no stimulation came, so yep. whatever stimulation it craved, like it began to just crave that stimulation. And one of yeah, the other, I don't know, one of the other reasons that you could have for it being a tree and why there's a bunch of them is that plants do multiply. Mm. So like maybe you have something where it's like it's it's some super tree somewhere, and its roots you know go up and then go back down, and every time they come up, they sprout as like a new plant basically, because that is a thing that can happen in in nature. And then you know, possibly, and then yeah. these are just shoots of the plant that have basically gone off, mm-hmm. and then they're like, oh, we want to get more stuff. Oh, there's something here that we can actually like leech off of you know yeah i could see that being a problem with regards to them being like an actual global threat then because then you'd know that they're all on the same continent at least sure but but maybe maybe it's more something where the one or ones in this area are a tree but when he goes elsewhere and this is why the being wants him to go elsewhere is that eventually he'll bump into others that he right. can get rid of. One that's just a mountain or something. Sure, yeah. or, or you know, a rock of some kind or something that's like um, something elemental, a little bit right. more primal, like yeah. like water, like a lake. Right, because these, these knockers feel like both a, a very colorful set of antagonistic forces, basically. Yeah. But also a way to expand the world and the... Not not just like the world of what exists here, but why these things exist, how they yeah. exist, and maybe what Fushi is. Sure. Because if they are failed experiments or things like that, right, you could have things where maybe some of them are just rocks, and they're completely innocuous because they're rocks. They don't really do anything, you know? So they don't matter. Right, they don't matter. But then, oh, you have, you know, ones that are trees or animals or things like that. And then if you get one that's similar to Fushi, mm-hmm. right? Where like it's it's actually like really similar. Right. Then maybe you could get even to the point where you have a conversation with them of some kind. Yeah. You yeah, know? I could definitely see that. And and them being a failed Fushi basically equivalent doesn't need to be that case. Mm-hmm. But I I like it on a couple levels, but primarily in the emotional reason is that it makes the first episode so important and the overarching story right. is that the reason why Fushi is this way is because of how lucky he was mm-hmm. to have such a wonderful source of stimulation from both the the, 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 the wolf dog, dog and the, the kid. And then, yeah. then the kid, yeah, yeah, yeah. So those memories and experiences are things he'll carry with him mm-hmm. like for all time as he's immortal or what have you. So right. then what are the what are the new experiences and stuff he'll gather will continue to be the main force of the story because those have those have merit and matter to be what some something that keeps him from ever becoming a knocker right now that's all a theory but that's mm-hmm. kind of the that's kind of the emotional yeah. reason why right because one of the, the story still should be about him ga- gar- garnering new experiences mm-hmm. and then the human connection with them right and and 
uh, among villains and antagonistic forces in stories, yeah. if it is a force, not something with like identity, personality. right? Personality, yeah. that can get a lot harder to attach onto the struggle against that force, we right? We don't care necessarily about one half yeah. of the conflict. Right, you know, and even if it's something where you make it be like a like some really cool, like fundamental aspect of nature, right? Where mm. then it becomes more like mythic in the struggle rather than- Like a race against time. Yeah, yeah, a exactly. Race against, you know, you know, entropy, like death or something. Right, it's yeah. Sauron where Working as a villain in Lord of the Rings, even if you know we have, you know, he like is darkness incarnate. Uh, right, right. Yeah. You know, you can make that kind of thing work. You can, but but then it's the it requires a lot of trappings onto it. A yeah. lot of trappings, and what's going to be the flavor that we have for these knockers, right? Because what is the role that they play in this world? Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah, but okay, yeah. Google's really, still really, alive. <laughs> really good episode. Really sweet, wholesome stuff. Mm -hmm. I love. I love, I love seeing Gugu all zold up and big and yeah. Be like, yeah, it's uh -huh. four years. I'm he hit puberty. He kept doing those chin ups. He kept doing his pull ups. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, just you go, dude. And then yeah. just the way in which Reen and him have this like kind of, you know, little right, little little, little banter going dynamic, on, little going flirting, on. you yep. know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, but all right, uh, Fushi learned that there are things he can see that others can't. That's true. That was a cool little detail for him to be like. Oh, uh, you can't see? Uh -huh. And it's like, see what? And it's like, oh, that's right. cool. Like the idea that that concept mm -hmm. of being even more separate from, you know, humans and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's just, oh, okay. All but right. Fushi also started growing a beard and like yeah. advanced in age. That's um worrying yeah that because then he's not immortal necessarily uh, well sure now it might just be that this form is aging or whatever and maybe it won't be too much of a problem because you know i don't know who knows but maybe he just needs new forms that's kind of what sure. the being is also prepping him for is that like yeah. hey you can Get use this form up. Mm -hmm. but it will eventually die yeah right because and it, and it does make sense in a lot of ways because if he's copying the form mm -hmm. right then he would be copying everything that goes with it. He everything. Wouldn't, yeah. He wouldn't know to selectively remove exactly. the things that are aging or whatever. Now he probably doesn't even have the ability to necessarily right. yet, or yeah. you know, at all. Now, one of the things that is kind of potentially odd, though, is that if he has a form that's copied mm -hmm. and it starts to age because he's living in that form for years, right? Is it saving? Is it overwriting the save file? Or if he like goes back into that form, will it go back to when it was four years ago? Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Probably something where it's it's being used, right? You know, you know, we've never seen him actually go and revert a form to something before he mm -hmm. copied the form. Yeah. So the bear is always going to have those little arrow stick spears mm -hmm. in it, and the yep. blood around the eyes specifically right. because. That's what the form was like when mm -hmm. that happened. That's a part of the actual visual makeup. Right. One of the other things that I want to throw out as potentially being the case mm. is that this is happening because he's truly learning how to be human. He's spending oh. all this time with them. And maybe that's why sure. the entity wanted him to leave. Because, we now granted, we don't know how long Fushi traveled in that human boy form from True. when the the boy died and he took on the form for the first yep. time to when he ended up running into march who's to say who's to say yep. it could have been just a couple months right but i, I want to say it was not a long period of time because of the fact that the beard grew over those four years right yeah and yet yeah so it's it's tough you know it's, because it's tricky because yeah. march also still has her wound you know mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah but he doesn't spend much time as march's form right really, though. yep so yeah yeah but all right, y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, though, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get an early access there. You can watch full-length timer reactions there, and all this comes with Discord access. So you can chat with us in the community there about this show, about anime in general, and also be sure to check out our Twitch channel. We stream every weekday. The info's in the description. Yeah, so if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time. time.